66 million years ago, our gargantuan asteroid collided with the Earth. The impact completely wiped out the dinosaurs what dominated the Earth for 160 million years. But did dinosaurs really disappear from the planet? Could it be that dinosaurs still live somewhere on the Earth? What if we're coexisting with dinosaurs right now? This isn't an imaginary story like Nessie, the Loch Ness Monster discovered in Scotland. I am going to let you in on a marvelous scientific fact. In 1969, an American paleontologist, Professor John Ostrom, discovered a dinosaur fossil called Deinonychus. However, while studying the fossil closely, Professor Ostrom discovered an astonishing fact, which is that Deinonychus and Archaeopteryx had over a hundred commonalities. Since at that time Archaeopteryx was known as the ancestor of birds, Professor John Ostrom concluded that modern birds may have evolved from dinosaurs. This revolutionary hypothesis that birds descended from dinosaurs was more than enough to excite the prehistoric science community. Thanks to Professor John Ostrom, the study of dinosaurs entered a new era. Supposing dinosaurs were the ancestors of birds begged several questions. Were dinosaurs cold-blooded animals? Is it right to classify dinosaurs as reptiles? Were the mating and rearing habits of dinosaurs like those of birds? And so on. Dinosaurologists refer to this period as the dinosaur renaissance, and it was at this point where various similarities between dinosaurs and birds began to emerge. It was revealed that many dinosaurs walked on two legs like birds, developed air sacs in their bones which could hold air, and that the wrist bones of the dinosaurs could bend backwards, just as birds can roll back their wings. Dinosaurs and birds have similar pelvic bones as well. The defining anatomical feature of dinosaurs is their pelvic structure, which has a hole their femur inserts into. Animals with such pelvic structures are classified as dinosaurs. Pterosaurs had holes in their pelvises, but the place where the femur inserted into was not a hole, so it can't be called a dinosaur. Likewise, ichthyosaurs aren't dinosaurs because there are no holes in their pelvic structures. So what about the pelvises of chickens, ducks, and penguins? These birds each have a hole in their pelvises, and their femurs fit into that hole. These kinds of characteristics add to the bird's very close connection with dinosaurs. Now, bit by bit, can you see that birds really are dinosaurs? But there's one problem. Dinosaurs lack the bird's most important feature, that is, their feathers. Feathers, the feature that makes birds, birds. Dinosaurs didn't have such feathers, and if dinosaurs didn't have feathers, could we really say that dinosaurs and birds were evolutionarily linked to each other? In 1996, when the notion that dinosaurs had no feathers caused many scientists to ponder, a shocking piece of news came from Liaoning province in northeast China. That's right, they discovered a feathered dinosaur fossil. Its name is Sinoceropteryx. If you look at the fossil closely, you can see primitive feathers extending from the head to the neck, back, and tail. And starting with Sinoceropteryx, hundreds of feathered dinosaur fossils were unearthed in nearby areas. Species like Protarchaeopteryx, Epidexipteryx, Sinornithosaurus, Apiosaurus, and Caudipteryx. Recently, as feathers have been found in fossils of not only small carnivorous dinosaurs, but also large herbivorous dinosaurs, it has been revealed that feathers were not a mutant trait, but rather a common characteristic among dinosaurs. So then, why did dinosaurs need feathers? Many scientists speculate that the early feathers of dinosaurs were not used for flying, but rather as a way to preserve their body temperature to attract mates. Just like how today's birds use their colorful feathers to attract females, some of the small carnivorous dinosaurs developed asymmetric feathers for flying, allowing them to survive the mass extinction event 66 million years ago and develop into modern-day birds. In other words, dinosaurs are still alive, but we simply call them birds. The mischievous city pigeon is a dinosaur, and that chicken you ate yesterday is also a dinosaur. So where among the many dinosaurs can we identify birds? First, dinosaurs are largely divided into the Ornithischian and Saurischian order. Ornithischians are mostly herbivorous dinosaurs that can be divided into Stegosauria, Ornithopods, Ankylosauria, Ceratopsia, and Pachycelophosauria, Stegosaurus and Pachycelophosaurus are well-known ornithischians. Saurischians are further divided into sauropods and theropods. A popular sauropod is the Brachiosaurus, and representative theropods include the famous Tyrannosaurus or T-Rex and Velociraptor. Looking at all the facts revealed so far, it's perfectly natural to categorize birds as theropods. Birds are included in the dinosaur category according to cladistic taxonomy created by German biologist Willy Henning in 1950. 
That means that pelicans, ostriches, penguins, and turkeys are all dinosaurs. As such, dinosaurs are not yet extinct, but rather living with us under the name bird. An interesting question here is, can we now genetically manipulate birds to make them more like dinosaurs? In 2006, Matthew Harris, a biologist at the University of Wisconsin in the United States, conducted an experiment on a bird you may be familiar with, the chicken. After studying chicken genes in detail, he discovered that chickens had a gene that made them grow teeth, a gene that had deactivated during the evolution of birds. Dr. Harris experimented with reactivating this gene, and the ch resulting chicks developed cone-shaped teeth while inside their eggs just like a small carnivorous dinosaur. Furthermore, in 2009, Professor John Horner of the University of Montana in the United States, based on the findings of Dr. Harris's research, planned a study that was quite the opposite, to make dinosaurs using chickens. Because the bodies of all living birds today contain genetic information inherited from their ancestors, the dinosaurs, he plans to create the characteristics of dinosaurs from chickens through genetic manipulation. This research plan, also known as the Chikinosaurus, project has yet to come to fruition, but it is a work in progress. But then, is this project especially significant? Even now, in various places around us, dinosaurs are in fact singing beautiful songs and are sometimes being sacrificed to make delicious meals. So today, how about you enjoy a beer with some dinosaur on the side instead of chicken? Science is a window to the world, and this has been Science Dream.